Did you know that there are over 2,200 known religions in the world? We are all born into one belief, religion, or faith, which influences how we see the world and everything and everyone in it, including ourselves. Do our beliefs divide and separate us, or do they bring us together in greater harmony? When you look up with awe on a star-filled night, do you ask who or what created all of this? Have you ever had a profound or deeply challenging experience in your life that changed your beliefs at the core of your being? Enlightened Pathways takes us on a journey of discovery to understand just how spiritual, transformational experiences impact our lives and the world around us. Join us now as we deeply explore all that nourishes, heals, and inspires us. Welcome to Enlightened Pathways. Welcome. My name is Robert Kabeca, and I am your host today for Enlightened Pathways. With me today is my guest, Nikki Lamar. And I met Nikki all oh, about four years ago as I started a little journey around the country. And I met her at a festival in uh, Quincy, Quincy, Kinsey, Quincy, Massachusetts, Quincy, Massachusetts. <laughs> yes, I, I always hear it pronounced very differently. So uh, Quincy, Massachusetts, and um, I was wandering through the festival, um, and I was kind of quite down and out, and because I was experiencing uh, some significant shortfalls in my life at that moment, and so I was walking through the festival, and I passed by this little booth that was selling this beautiful jewelry, and it just stopped me in my tracks, and I stopped and I looked. And Nikki and I started having a conversation, and we quickly realized that we were quite kindred spirits. I've learned a lot about Nikki since then, and have followed her journey uh, across the country. Um, she is a crystal healer. She works a lot with selenite in her healing methodologies. She traveled around the country to some selenite digs and uh, dug up a lot of selenite over the past couple of years, created this beautiful... Uh, mobile van that uh, she's traveled around in and so I'm very grateful that you showed up here this weekend <laughs> and we had our own little tours here in Maine as well. So as I've learned about Nikki and her journey, um, one of the things that I've really appreciated is her depth of being and I've really resonated with that in my own spiritual growth and her own creations have helped to ground me in my own spiritual path. So with that, I'd like to introduce you to Nikki. Thank you for having me. Very welcome. I Thanks. was so happy <laughs> to get the email and invitation to come and talk about my favorite subject of all time. So Your favorite subject? It totally is. Excellent. Why don't you tell me about that? <laughs> like minute? 26 minutes is not enough. Um, <laughs> yeah, so I, my life is about my spiritual, spiritual journey, and my work is about it, and my consciousness is about it and just focusing on where I'm at, being aware at what I'm feeling, what I'm thinking, um, or attempting to um, every moment of the day. So yeah, it's a beautiful thing. That is. When did you start to recognize your spiritual connection early in life? Yeah, so for me, it was early. I was raised Catholic. I'm the youngest of seven children. And um, we grew up in the country in the tiny town of Menden, Massachusetts. And um, I was let out <laughs> in the morning with my dogs. And I would play until I heard the cowbell to come in for lunch. And so um, there was a lot of beautiful, quiet time in nature, and I would have these moments of bliss. I would be perhaps in a tree, climbing a tree, um, and just having this moment of stillness where I could hear the wind blowing through the pine needles. And it all of a sudden, I would have this overwhelming euphoria flow through me. And it would last only a few seconds, um, but each time that happened, I would want to capture it. And I would think, oh, what made me feel that way? Or what was I thinking? What was I doing? And it wasn't like getting a gift and feeling joy about the gift. It was something different. And um, yeah, so those were the first moments. Mm -hmm. um, and then my father 
dad was French Catholic and my mother was Irish Catholic. And they grew up in Marlboro, so usually the two did not mix. So there was, um, he would speak often at the dinner table, Sunday dinners, um, about the hypocrisy within the Catholic religion mm -hmm. and how the French and the Irish and they couldn't even get along and they're all Catholic and how can that be? And then he would bring my attention to, or bring everybody's attention, to the fact that we'd go to church, listen to a beautiful sermon, be touched, moved, and inspired, and then get into the car and people are trying to cut each other off to get out of the parking lot. So that really made me start thinking, and that was it like seven. And I remember thinking to myself at that age, um, how are we ever going to end war, poverty, injustice in this world if we can't get out of the parking lot? That's a great question. So that really set me up. Then two of my brothers became Jehovah's Witnesses, which started a whole new dialogue in our family <laughs> <laughs> of um, religious introspection and just uh, observing in my own family the lack of um, inquiry as to why my brothers became Jehovah's Witnesses. So after college, I ended up studying with them um, for, we, I lasted about six months. And, I, you know, you, if you've ever studied with the Jehovah's Witnesses, they have a book and awesome. you read, um, they have you read and they tell you things and they bring it back to scripture and then you have to answer these questions at the bottom of the page. Well, they obviously people who just are led easily would read the question, answer based on what they had read in the book. Well, no, I kept going back to Genesis. <laughs> I was like, okay, this doesn't make any sense to me because in Genesis it says blah, blah, blah. And how can you, how do you um, equate that? And yeah, we, we didn't do very well. And it wasn't antagonistic on my part. It was really trying to understand if Genesis says this, how did we get here? Mm. And what was it that started you to question that? That even inspired because you I loved my brothers and mm, I felt all great, of this yeah. tension in our family. Mother's Day was a contentious day. Mm. My father would be very upset at my brothers who are witnesses because they don't celebrate holidays. How could you do that to your mother? And so just mm. trying to understand, you know, always going back to how can we love each other more? Mm. And that's what Christ's teachings were about to me. Mm. <laughs> it yeah. seems very simple. Um, do unto others as you would have done unto yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, yeah, if people just stop and take a minute to think instead of being led by the dialogue, especially nowadays, it's been yeah. a challenge. Yeah. Um, but one of the funniest things that happened to me was I was 14 and I walked into the kitchen, it was after school, and there are my my older brother Ed was the first to become a witness and then my um, the next in line from me was my brother Richard he's four years older than I and they were talking about they got really quiet when I walked into the kitchen I was like hey what's going on what are you what are you talking about I could feel the energy shift and um, they said oh you know we're talking about the Bible but and and we I was like oh okay and so you could see the gleam in Ed's eye like he wanted to tell me he's like but you can't tell mom because oh, no. you're at that impressionable age right <laughs> I'm like oh I won't say anything so they start he starts telling me about Armageddon <laughs> and revelations wow. which is some heavy wow. duty stuff so here Pretty I heavy. am listening to all of this my eyes are getting wider and wider like, oh my goodness, this is, you know, the good angels are going to come down to have it from heaven and help the bad, or get rid of the bad angels, and there's going to be this big battle, and all I could think of was, I want to help the good angels. Like, that's <laughs> all, I, I became, like, obsessed, like, how can I help? Instead of being fearful that I'm going to be destroyed because I'm not a Jehovah's Witness, do you know? Yeah. I was just yeah. like, oh, no, I want to help, I want to help. But so it's just interesting that, um, and then as I grew older from there, so I was about 14 then, um, I just didn't, I was like, if you believe in, event, if it's a vengeful God, yeah, I I'll take death over that. <laughs> like, I was just like, I don't want to do any, it was just so counter against my nature. Mm -hmm. It didn't make any sense mm -hmm. to me. You either believe in love or you believe in fear. Mm -hmm. The, the two don't, they're polar opposites yeah. in my brain yeah. and way of understanding. 
Yeah. So Most people think it's love and hate, but it's love and fear. It really is fear. I mean, t yeah, to me, my understanding of it is that fear begets hate. Yeah. So it really is that fear response. And so much of the dialogue today is based on that fear, mm -hmm. is using people's fear to lead them in a certain direction. And I just have gone the opposite way, like trying to stay in a love vibration every day. Mm -hmm. um, it's a much better place to be, isn't it? You know, Feels good. It does feel good. Mm -hmm. and, it, and I know that for someone like me, it has taken many years to navigate you know, a, a history of challenges, uh, to keep it simple, to understand where my source of power, my real authentic source of power was coming from mm -hmm. and what it was really connected to. Mm -hmm. And being brave enough, I don't know if brave is the right word, but finding, finding the courage enough to be willing to explore it because I too grew up in a religious household mostly and Catholic school and you know Sunday school and what have you. I was told what to believe, but not explained. You know, right. it was taking away my choices. Mm -hmm. And when I started to discover I could make my own choices, for me it was a lot of guilt and shame about making it as, oh wait, if I don't believe in the God that I was brought up to believe in, I am going to hell. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, and, so, and that's not everybody's experience with, with growing up in those churches. But it was my experience, and I was the one who had to live through it and grow through it and find a way, you know, on the mm -hmm. other side of it, where I could start questioning carefully. Yes. And asking difficult questions until now I feel an immense freedom to explore my consciousness and awareness and that source of power that I experience within myself, that I experience with other people. Yeah, you know? yeah, that connection. Yeah. I, I love, um, is it the Christian scientist? No, what's the other one that says that the only sin is believing in the separation? Like that we're not connected mm -hmm. to each other, that we're not one consciousness mm -hmm. streaming through into these yeah. bodies, these separate bodies. I don't know which one it is, but I resonate with that a lot. Yeah. Because, you know, separation is where, because if it's me against you, who am I really going to choose? You know, I mean, the human psyche is built around self-protection and self-preservation. Mm -hmm. And so if there is that separation, I'm going to go for survival, you know? Right. Instead of looking at it as me and you. Right. <laughs> and understanding the different lenses. Yes, exactly. Some, sometimes I look at it as like one of those beautiful stained glass windows and the light of source energy or God mm -hmm. or the oneness shines through. The scientists would call it the quantum field, mm -hmm. right? Shines through that beautiful stained glass through all the different colors and shapes and lines. Yeah, and expressions yeah. of that one light. I find that the concept of uh, being connected, being one, the unseparation of not just between me and other people, but everything tends to create a life that I feel I am in flow with. Yes. Yes. And the deeper I go into that flow, the easier yeah. and more fun life becomes. Yeah. Like just this morning, I um, was visiting with some friends and you know, I could hear their thoughts before they would say their thoughts. And so, and then they were like, I was just thinking that. I said, I know, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just becomes, yeah, yeah. so much more yeah. fun and, and easier to communicate with other people and to really hear their fear and feel in their energy where, you know, what's going on. Yeah, mm -hmm. absolutely. It's wonderful. What do you think has, um, been helpful for you uh, over the past few years. You know, we've been through COVID. We've been through and uh, we've been through some interesting things on this planet over the past few years, and that I have found challenging to reconcile with my own concept of unity and wholeness and mm -hmm. unconditional love and acceptance and participation, and I found it 
find myself many times in a place of contention as opposed to, mm -hmm. um, again, wholeness, cooperation or something like that, mm -hmm. and having to re-explore and repurpose my connection so that I can still find a way to fit in, you know, and be part of. Mm -hmm. So in your own experience over the past few years, what has that been like for you to navigate? Um, you know, it's been a challenge. And I feel like uh, sometimes the greatest <laughs> gift that we can give somebody else is a good old slap in the face. And so, um, and not in a mean way, right. but in a wake up way. So I, you know, I, I use social media for my work and my life. Um, so I'm very present there. And I have given myself permission to unfollow, block, delete um, people that are very stuck in the mud about this is the way I'm going to look at the world and I'm not listening to anybody else or anything else and I'm being rude and demeaning mm. and um, cruel. Mm. And, and so yeah. how do you deal with that in a balanced way? I'm not going to enable those people by continuing to uh, keep them on my social media and some people are like oh that's so mean but in a way it's taking a stand and it's saying no there's a better way there's a better way to communicate and I am open 24 7 to have any conversation with any person yeah. always yeah. but um, you know forgiveness comes with the asking and apology there's a two-way and you can't just I won't ruin my own vibration, energy, sense of peace and centeredness mm -hmm. um, by having discussions and conflicts with, mm -hmm. and I feel like that's okay. That it kind of, when we walk away, a good friend of mine told me the other day, he said, I realized that a certain friend had unfriended me. And, and uh, he said, I, I asked her, you know, have I been too much on, on the deep end? And she, she was like, yeah, like you kind of have. And so that was that proverbial slap in the face. It mm -hmm. got his attention to really stop and say, huh, I may want to rethink this. Like, what's more important to you, loving human beings or being right? And I feel like love is the answer. If we could just go back to that and, ha and be committed to peace and conversation, I think we'd get back to a better place. But it's been devastating. Mm. And I feel like um, so many of my friends in the spiritual community have bypassed spirituality 101, kindness, compassion, respect, understanding, integrity, authenticity. That's what spirituality is to me. And I feel like when we lose sight of that over being right, we're an ego. And... And it, get, it does get difficult at times for me to hear people who profess to have embraced a certain belief system, you know, a certain popular religion or what have you, um, that is supposed to be quite loving and accepting in an unconditional <laughs> way, and yet their behavior is everything but exactly and so it's like well wait a minute how do I put this and this together you know how do I make sense of this mm -hmm. how do I how do I not say that I don't believe you because you know you're, you're being two-faced about it mm -hmm. it's again yeah the hypocrisy it's a hypocrisy and yeah. if you could just live the Beatitudes for one day and yeah. I told my my Jehovah's Witness brothers I said listen you know you think all the Catholics are going to hell the Catholics think other people are going to hell. And I'm like, if you all could just follow Christ's teachings and live yeah. the Beatitudes for one day, yeah. then come and talk to me yeah. about, you know, how yeah. you're going to be saved and I'm not. Like, yeah. And if, if, if a God is going to be like that, then you know, sign yeah. me off. <laughs> like, I don't want to participate in that. Yeah. Like, it just feels so counter, like, it doesn't make yeah. any sense to me. Well, you know, it's interesting because, you know, you and I have a similar concept in the construct of how, you know, our human psyche works and how we engage in reality where we hold a belief 
and that belief is designed to inspire us to act in a certain way. Exactly. Yeah. However, if I say that I'm unconditionally loving, but my actions are not, Mm -hmm. Where is that disconnect and what is it that's going on inside me or a person that's able to justify that disconnect? Because I am of the belief that every that there's a positive intention for everything. Totally. So even if I'm lying, there's a positive intention. If I'm mm -hmm. if I'm deluding myself, there's a positive intention behind it, you know, in some way, even though I'm not aware of it. But what is it that makes that happen? So I'm always curious how to uh, unravel that so that I find myself able to um, uh, what sort of want to use this that I find myself able to distinguish whether or not I'm actually walking my talk I told a good friend once I said Frank <laughs> I will always love you I may not like you but I will always <laughs> love you yeah it's okay. <laughs> so in that unconditional love, yeah. you know, yeah. I completely, you know, have love, yeah. compassion, and understanding. Yeah. I may not choose to be in the presence of right. the other. We've got just a few minutes left. The See? time flew by, right? I told you. <laughs> I know. And so I have to ask, you know, it's like, what is the, like one of the most important things that you value within your belief structure that you think might be beneficial to our audience that they might be able to yeah. latch on to? It's just a, I feel like making peace a priority, like just, mm. you know, yeah. making inner peace a priority, mm. taking that deep breath, giving yourself a couple of seconds. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you for having yeah, me. Yeah, thank you, everybody. <laughs> and unfortunately, that is all the time that we have today to spend with Nikki. Um, and I am so grateful that you made time to come up here and uh, be with us in person. It's such a huge thrill. Loved being thank here. You. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> if you'd like to get more information about Nikki and about her crystal healing practices and about the beautiful the beautiful everything she makes, uh, just spectacular, you can visit uh, her website at um, crystalandstonesstudio.com, mm -hmm. right? Thank you. And I'll put that up here in the, uh, on our website so you can find it there and it'll also be in the credits as well. And just a few closing remarks and a shout out to today's executive producer and sponsor, Bridge to Heaven Healing and Leap and Lizards, which is the premier source for healing crystals and readings with four locations, including 123 Main Street, Freeport, Maine. You can visit www.leapinlizards.biz for more information. Also, a big thanks to our co-executive producer, Dr. Annika Becca, the creator of Mighty Maca Plus, the daily nourishing supplement that improves metabolism and reinvigorates the body. Visit drannikabecca.com for more information. Also, if you would like to get more information about this show, to reach out to us, or to sponsor us, please visit www.deepbeing.org. We would love to hear from you. And a quick shout out to the crew, director Patrick McCartan, audio and sound Dale Ashby, and cameras Travis Nadeau, as well as to the Portland Media Center and their team, Tom, Dino, and Warren. We wouldn't be here without them. Thank you for watching Enlightened Pathways and spending your valuable time with us today. Until next time, play, have fun, be happy.